So in terms of workflow, it's, pretty, it's quite easy. To your master plate, you can add your live alkaline phosphatase dye, incubate it for like 20 to 30 minutes, wash it off, and then you can immediately image the cells. The added advantage of having a live alkaline phosphatase substrate would be that the stained colonies can then be selected and expanded instead of this being an endpoint assay. So shown here are images of um, ESC, a mouse and H9 human ESC, which were stained with this novel live alkaline phosphatase, which was develop developed within Life Technologies. So on top here, you see ESC colonies on MEF feeders, and you see the specific staining of just the ESC colonies. Uh, the staining is robust, both with human as well as mouse ESCs. To further determine if this, the specificity of the live AP dye, we looked at staining patterns in the irradiated MEFs, which are often the feeders for embryonic uh, stem cells, and BJ human fibroblasts, which is actually our starting material for reprogramming. Uh, you can see that there's basically no staining in these starting cells, but you can see that there's a very specific staining on uh, H9 ESC, mouse ESCs, you've seen it already. And this is an iPSC colony which was derived using um, Cytotune reprogramming system. And you can see that the colonies here too are uh, really specifically stained both on feeders as well as feeder-free systems. And shown here is data here. Uh, this is just the no cells background. And this is the control cells which did not get the live AP stain but were treated similar in terms of washes. So the four independent um, uh, dyes which, we, which were synthesized um, separately and experiments were carried out separately showed that there was no impact on the cell viability. Um, and as negative controls, we had included a 50% DMSO and 1% PFA which causes significant cell death. So you can see that with the addition of live AP, there was no significant reduction in the cell number as measured by the Presto Blue Viability Assay. So the, the, the next obvious thing we, we wanted to show was that live alkaline phosphatase could be used in the iPSC generation workflow and clones could be um, identified, expanded without much uh, issues. So the, the workflow here was to transduce um, BJ fibroblast with the cytotune reprogramming particles. And when at the end of three to four weeks, when colonies began to appear on the master dish, we added the live alkaline phosphatase dye and chose the brightest, um, the ones with the most robust staining patterns. Those clones were picked and they were further characterized. So this shows um, the very first um, step, which is the, the staining of the master plate. You can see that the colonies are not that great at this point of time, but they do stain robustly with live AP. And as an independent confirmation, we also stained that colony with TRA-160 for that particular uh, experiment. But subsequently, what we did was just looked at live AP as a measure and picked 12 robustly um, stained live AP colonies and transferred them into six well dishes, which were on feeders. Um, all the 12 clones that were chosen by this method expanded, and they retained an ES morphology. For example, shown here are two clones uh, at day three and day five. You can see that the colonies are proliferating and expanding. And to further demonstrate that the live AP does not alter either the integrity of the cells or the proliferation rate, we actually uh, chose two different clones, and we went there and mechanically scored the colonies using a needle, and parts of the colonies were removed. And so you can see that this is a live AP stained colony, and when the colony was still green, these colonies were scored. The, the media was then changed, and the dye obviously diffuses after two hours. So after two hours, the, the cells have no uh, retention of the fluorescent dye. You can see that by two hours, it's completely gone. The green is gone. And when these cells were allowed to recover for 48 hours, the cells, the gaps in between the colonies, they grow back and they continue to express pluripotent markers when stained with markers such as SSEA4 and TRA160. This demonstrates that there's no impact of live AP dye either on the growth or on the pluripotence maintenance. Uh, further, the, the 12 different clones that we had picked, we continued with three clones because obviously 12 is too many to manage. And this is just a representative, the representative images of one of the clones at passage five and passage 10. 
They can be repeatedly stained with live AP dye, and they continue to uh, express other pluripotent markers, such as SSEA4, CHA160, NANOG, and OCT4. And they uh, obviously maintain an ESC-like morphology throughout the proliferation phase. When the clones are around passage 10, they can be readily adapted to different culture systems. We, even though our uh, original derivation was in um, feeder-dependent systems with KSR media, we were able to adapt them onto either feeder-free and MEF-conditioned media or onto uh, Stempro SFM without any uh, loss in um, the cellular structure and integrity. More recently, we've been able to actually directly derive live or seed the live AP positive cells that we pick from the master plate onto feeder-free conditions. And we've been able to do that both on defined matrix, such as cell start, and also gel tracks in the presence of the STEM Pro HSC SFM media. So finally, to demonstrate its pluripotency, we were, this is a representative of one of the clones. The, the clones do differentiate when pushed through uh, random EB formation, they result in cell types representative of, the, representative of the three germ layers. And more importantly, the three, all the three clones were karyotypically normal. 